Welcome back to the video series on pointers for my uh, data abstraction class. In the last video, we wrote a little code where we actually explored how we can make pointers. We can either use the address of to get the address of a variable. Generally, this is a variable that is on the stack. Or we can call new to get a, a pointer from the heap. And we saw that the values that we get, the address of a stack pointer and the address of a heap pointer, are very different. I want to take just a little bit more time in this video to explore that before we go on and look at pointer syntax and how we can really use pointers. So the first thing I want to do is in addition to printing the values we had before, I want to print the other addresses here. So we declare A, B, and C in this order. B is the address of A, so when I print this that's basically the same as the address of A. And then I want to print the address of B and the address of C. These three values uh, should all be located on the stack. We should get stack pointers, and we'd expect them to be fairly, uh, fairly close together in memory. And if we look here, we get this was the address of A, the address of B, and the address of C. And it's very easy to see that the separation between B and C is eight bytes. I'm on a 64-bit machine, so B needs to take at least 8 bytes of memory. Uh, the type int, however, only requires 4 bytes, and you'll see that the location of A is actually 4 bytes prior to the location of B. Um, so they are in order, and the addresses in this case are actually getting larger from A to B to C as they were declared here. Okay, well, what if I throw in something that's a little bit different? So in between A and B, I'm going to declare another variable, S, and S is of type short. Okay. So whereas ints, well, depends, uh, ints on this machine are taking four bytes, uh, shorts generally only take two bytes, and I'm pretty sure that's the case for this machine. And I'm going to print it in order. So I this is the address of A, S, B, C, A, S, B, C. So I'm printing them in the same order in which they are declared. And now we'll compile that code and we'll run it. And what do we see here? Okay, well, they're all still close together. Um, you'll note that this ended with a C, this still ends with a C. The 0 is still a 0, the 8 is still an 8. Uh, what about that S? Well, FA. It turns out that the uh, compiler decided, decided to stick the value S before the A. So first thing to note here, the order in which you declare things inside of functions, it does not have to preserve that in memory. And as a general rule of thumb, you should never assume that you know how the compiler is going to lay things out in memory, because you don't. Uh, unless you happen to write the compiler yourself, or you've gone and looked in detail at the code, uh, you don't know where it's going to put things. It can reorder these. It can also add additional space in between them. It's not doing that here, but it could. Uh, it does not have to, uh, to have these things directly adjacent to each other. There are actually situations where it's faster if you make things take a little bit of additional space. Okay, so what about seeing the stack as it grows? So I'm going to just write a little recursive function here. It takes one argument, it's an integer. And what happens inside of here? Well, if the argument is greater, greater than zero, Then I am going to make a new integer. We'll call it i. I'll set it equal to 5. I really don't care. And I'm going to print out two things inside of here. C out. Actually, let's print out the value of arg. We will print out the space, the address of i, and the address of arg.
and then I will call this same recursive function with an argument that's one smaller and let's call recur with an argument of three. Okay, so the first time we call this, it has a value of three. Three is greater than zero. So to declare a variable here, we're not using it for anything other than to print its address. I wanna print the address both of this variable i, which is a local variable, should be stack allocated, and of the argument that is coming in. Okay, because that also is something that we need space on the stack for. So both i and arg should be stack allocated. And I just wanna see how they're laid out relative to one another. So we compile and we run. These were our earlier printouts. The three, here is the address of i. Here is the address of a. Uh, this changed by one in the second digit up, which is a factor of 16 here um, <clears throat> from nine. And so the C went to a D, the nine goes to an A, the six goes to a C. So the relative layout of these is always the same. The I winds up being 16 bytes further down than the value arg. And the other question is what's happening as we go? D became A became seven, C became nine became six. You'll notice that that is actually getting smaller. And so indeed, when I drew the picture of what the stack looks like here, every time that you get a new stack frame, you're actually moving to a smaller memory address. Uh, there's nothing that says this has to be the case. This just happens to be how it's done on, on PCs, uh, on Linux with this compiler. Uh, you could imagine an architecture where the stack wound up growing from the small numbers up to large, but that's not what happens here. And so we can actually see how memory is being allocated. The last thing we should do in this video is maybe allocate a few more things with new. And let's think about how I want to, to do this. Um, an int star we'll make five of them now actually let's let's first do this this way okay four int i equals zero i less than five plus plus i uh, sorry int star temp equals new of int C out temp equals at TMP. And let's go ahead and add the at here just to make sure that it matches. And if I allocate something, I want to make sure I delete it. Okay. We compile, we run, we get the same type of things that we did before. Now this, okay, <clears throat> this is remarkably boring. It printed out the same address five times. Why is that? Well, because we allocate here and then we delete here, it turns out the second time we allocate, the memory we've just used has now been freed back up. And it's exactly the same size as what we want. So it's possible to reclaim that exact same memory. There is no guarantee that this would happen. There's nothing that says this has to be the same pointer every time, but because I called delete here, it is possible for it to reuse the same memory, and indeed, in this case, it did. What if I don't want it to reuse the same memory? Well, then I would actually need to, well, there are two ways. I could be you know, bad and not deallocate things, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a vector for this because it will just be easier that way. Pound include vector using std vector vector of int star pointers and Sure, we'll keep doing that, but instead of deleting it here, I'm just going to say pointers.push back TMP. Well, 
while not uh, pointers dot empty. Delete pointers dot back. We'll see if I'm remembering my API correctly. Pointers dot pop back. And did I type all that in correctly? Well, well enough that it compiles. Okay, now this is problematic here because I'm not freeing up this pointer. I didn't call delete. I should not be able to get the same address each time. Yet it is giving me that. Um, I'm having to put things in here that I would have wanted to have in a later video. That's fine. Uh, see out star pointers sub i. Oh, now that's confusing. It is saying that I'm getting the same temp every single time here. Okay. All of these pointers are the same, yet when I dereference them, oh wait, okay, all those pointers are the same, but in this loop, they're not. Oh, I because it, no, duh, that makes sense. Sorry, I didn't want at temp here, I wanted temp. In fact, it should have stood out because this is the location of a stack variable. This looks more like that. It doesn't look like this. I wasn't printing the heap location. I was printing the stack location. So when I print the heap locations here, there we go. Everyone is offset. Looks like these are offset by four. Uh, actually, oh, and this is even better. They're not in linear order. Uh, 4030, 4070, 4050, 4090, 40EO. Once again, this the heap does not have to be well ordered. Uh, just to show, I ran back through these things and showed that the memory locations that are stored there are the values that we put from 0 to 4. But new can give you a memory location, an address located anywhere inside of the heap. Okay, so it doesn't have to have any real order to it. Uh, okay, well now this begs the question of, let's go back my original because I had remember originally I was saying that it could do this but it didn't have to the question is is it actually going to give us back the same memory yes it is okay so even if I print the appropriate heap location and not the the stack location if I call delete inside of this loop I am getting the same pointer every time okay so that's it for our playing with variables we'll come uh, in in the next video and we'll look at how we can actually do things with these pointers. Okay? Instead of just printing out their addresses, we'll actually do something and we'll talk about the syntax of dealing with pointers.